Drought and water scarcity. Factors contributing to drought include global warming. El Nino cycles and random meteor meteorological variability. Factors contributing to water shortages include increased water demand, drying up of surface water, reduced yield of wells and springs, water pollution, restricted access to water sources, dysfunctional water distribution, and poor water conservation. Consequences of drought include desertification, famine, and drought is closely associated with political disruption, especially in Africa. Possible public health hazards include health hazards like insufficient water for consumption and insufficient water for hygiene purposes, the threat to agriculture and economy, malnutrition may be caused by lack of water for food preparation, loss of electrical power from hydroelectric generation, There are also a number of environmental hazards that may uh, result from drought and desertification. The general aims for the public health response in water emergencies are to save life and preserve health by making at least the minimum quantities of reasonably safe water available for household use, for institutions, and for community services, to provide supplies where possible for livestock and irrigation purposes, to restore or enhance existing sources, pumping and distribution systems where possible, to develop alternative arrangements where necessary. Water priorities for public health include protection of existing water sources from contamination, maintenance of water systems, conservation measures, and seeking alternative sources. Conservation measures may include storage tanks, recycling wastewater for sanitation and irrigation if this is possible, and rationing of water. Choosing alternative water sources. Rain and deep closed wells are usually unsafe. Surface water and shallow or open wells are unlikely to be safe. Criteria for choosing between alternative water sources. Speed with which it can be made operational. How fast can we set up this water source? Potential yields from this water source, reliability of supply, water purity, simplicity of technology and ease of maintenance, as well as the appropriateness of this technology to the affected communities, costs, rights and welfare of affected population. Transportation. Truck water should only be a strictly short-term stopgap emergency measure to ensure immediate survival of the affected population. Quantity is preferable to quality, although quality is also important. Involve the community in finding solutions. Involve the national and local water authorities equipment and infrastructure that are normally responsible. Pay special attention to the needs of hospitals, 
schools, health centers, and feeding centers, as well as other important institutions. Individuals need at least 15 to 30 liters per person per day. The absolute minimum for survival is 3 to 5 liters per day. Health centers need 40 to 60 liters per patient per day. Feeding centers need, to 20, need 20 to 30 liters per person per day. Needs increase with air temperature and exertion. Minimize work invested in interim solutions. Try and look for permanent solutions. Provide safe water as close as possible to homes. Minimize the risk of water contamination in distribution points, delivery, and households. Provide safe storage at community and household levels. Mobilize appropriate technical expertise, water engineers to exploit available resources, sanitarians to test and organize water treatment, hydrogeologists to assess groundwater potential, hydrologists to assess surface water potential. <laughs>